Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning and in this video we're going to cover method or explain the method of singularity functions and how singularity functions are used for deflection calculations in a beam or or the getting the equation of an elastic curve and then you know, I'll define for you what a singularity function is for all the different loading types and then explain and just give you a brief process for how to implement them for beam deflection calculations in a statically determinate beam. One thing you should also know is that this is a great technique for solving for reactions in a statically indeterminate beam as well. Now this topic isn't always covered in a, in a first course in mechanics and materials, but this really could be one of the best ways to calculate or determine the equation of the elastic curve or deflections at any specific point, but it's really useful when you have a complicated loading. So for instance, let's take this beam into consideration. So I've got this beam here with a pin and a roller, and it's got this uniformly distributed load, this concentrated load, and a linear distributed load that starts over here. If I wanted to solve this, I wanted to get the deflection equations using some traditional technique like the double integration method. So the functions that I would need, I would need five moment functions to solve this problem out. And what that means is I would have to cut here, 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 and here in between any discontinuity. And in case you're not familiar with what a discontinuity is, I kind of summarized it up right here. But basically, a discontinuity is at the beginning or end of a distributed load. Uh, any concentrated reaction. I'm sorry, not concentrated force, right, or a moment, concentrated forces or moment, or at any support reaction. And you've got to cut in between each of these. Here, I would need moment functions that describe a distance. Let's say I choose this as my origin here. I would need a first function here. My next cut would be here. Next two. And you can see where I'm going with this. And so if I want to use the double integration method to solve this beam uh, deflection out, okay, I, I would need five different moment functions, which means 10 boundary conditions to solve for 10 unknown constants. Ay, right, this thing would take forever. But the method of singularity functions provides you with a way to essentially describe the moment function or the loading with just one equation for the entire length of the beam. And that way you're just one and done. So you're probably asking, what the heck is a singularity function? So a singularity function, it, the best, best way to describe it is probably like a, it's like a mathematical switch. And it's written in the, this way. It's, it has, uses these angled brackets. And this x minus a to the power of n. And I'm going to show you what, tell you what the significance of all these things is. But it's like a, a if statement. So that if x is greater than or equal to a, the switch is turned on. And in this x, this angled bracket x to the x minus a to the power of n becomes x minus a to the nth power. If x is less than a, then this whole thing just equals zero. And so what this means is when x is greater than or equal to a, then my switch is on. Any time before that, this is off. All right, so let me show you some quick and dirty examples of these singularity functions. Uh, let's take, for instance, so let's take this function y is equal to three times angled bracket x minus one to the zeroth power. And the way this thing looks like is this. And so if I graph this out, what it means is that if x is less than a, then this function is zero, is three times zero. In this case, a is equal to one. I would have anywhere before one, my whole function, my value for y is just zero. When x is equal to one, it jumps. So this, th this term, when x equals one, this becomes x minus one to the zero power. So at x greater than or equal to one, y now becomes three times x to the minus one to the zeroth power. And anything to the zeroth power is one. So this just becomes three times one. So that means any time at or after one, this whole thing has a value of three. And it's what people call a step function. And if you can see, this would describe a uniformly distributed load. Let's take one more example. So this time, let's consider y is equal to to two times the singularity function or the angle bracket x minus one to the first power. And if I try to plot this out, x is less than one, this y is equal to two times zero. And the way that would look would just be this flat line. And once x is greater than or equal to one, this y becomes two times x minus one to the first power. So that at x equals one, this is zero. At x equals two, then I have here, this would be two. At x equals three, this would be 
four. Right, it's, I, I think you get the idea. This will be a line. And this would be, if you can imagine, this is a linear function now after x equals one. It, it describes a linearly distributed load. All right, so if you could understand what a singularity function is, now you really just have to understand why we want the singularity function to describe loading. So let's consider a, a beam, let's say a simply supported beam, with some uniformly distributed load. I won't draw it in here, but the deflected shape here is this blue line. This, this right here would represent what we call the elastic curve. And I'll call that V of X such that this would be positive V and this would be positive X. Now the, the relationship here is that if V of X is the elastic curve, the derivative of the elastic curve is a slope. And then the derivative of the slope is the curvature. And we, if you study the double integration method, then you know that the curvature is also described by the moment function divided by EI. And a lot of times people will start with a moment function for the entire length of the beam using singularity uh, using singularity functions and then integrate that twice to get the display shape. So that's one way that people do it. Another way that people do this is if you keep going and taking derivatives, if you remember the, the derivative of the moment is a shear. And so this would be times the shear function. And then if you take one more derivative, this whole thing right here, d to the fourth, v of the display shape, dx to the fourth, then this is 1 over ei times w of x. And in this case here, this w of x describes a loading function. And the idea is that if you can describe the loading function in one equation using singularity functions, then you just integrate four times and you would get the display shape. Bam! You can also do that with moment functions here, starting at the curvature. If you have a moment function using singularity functions, then you just integrate twice, the, aka the double integration method, and you get the display shape. But instead of doing like five functions, you can just do one function. So the, naturally, the next question is, you know, how do I describe the loads, the, the external loads that are applied to my beam using singularity functions? And in particular, how do I take a load and even describe it as, as part of the moment function? So here, I'm just going to give you a rundown on how uh, all these are done. And you can find these in al almost any mechanics and materials textbook. All right, so what I've done here is I've drawn out probably the four most popular loading cases that you could have on a beam. This concentrated moment at location A, where X is going positive towards the right, the way that we would describe this moment as part of a loading function would be here, this W would be equal to the magnitude of the concentrated moment times the singularity function X minus A to the minus two, and A being where this concentrated moment is applied. If I want to describe this concentrated moment as part of a moment function, this would be m0 times the singularity function to the zero power. My concentrated force applied at some location a, where x is again positive towards the right, would be described as part of a loading function as p0 times x minus a to the minus one power. And here, as part of the moment function, a concentrated force would be described as, again, the magnitude of that force times to the first power. And what you want to do is notice here, a positive concentrated force is upwards. If this concentrated force were pointing down, we'd have to put a negative value here. And then same thing here for this moment. Notice this is a positive moment causing a jump up. For the distributed loading here, you see, again, this uniformly distributed load with a magnitude w0, which starts at point A. And again, for the loading function, I would have this w is equal to minus w0 and negative because this is this constant, this distributed load is pointing downwards, times x minus a to the 0 power. Or as part of a moment function, the distributed load would be described as minus w0 over 2 times x minus a squared. For a linear linearly distributed load, I need to know what the slope is for this line. The linear distributed load as part of the loading function is equal to minus m times the singularity function x minus a to the power of 1. And notice, because my distributed load is acting downwards, I have a negative sign here. You, my linearly distributed load as part of the moment function would be minus m over 6 times x minus a to the third power. Now what you can see here, at least in terms of the powers, 
the distance, if you will, from the loading function to the moment function is, you know, integrating twice. But you're probably asking, why is there something in the denominator here for the, the distributed loading function, loaded functions, whereas here there are none? That means, or what that suggests, is that there are different rules for integrating singularity functions depending on the power. So the rules for integrating the singularity functions depends on that nth power. So if we have n less than 0, which means that n is equal to negative 1 or negative 2, then when we try to integrate the singularity function, we'll get that this right here is just x minus a to the n plus 1. For instance, let's take, I'm trying to integrate uh, some constant, let's p times x minus a to the minus 1 dx. The integral would be p x minus a to the 0. In the case where n is greater than or equal to 0, this would be your standard integral that you're used to, you know, what you've learned in basic calculus, 1 over m plus 1 with the angle brackets x minus a to the n plus 1 power. An example of this would be if I had, and if I wanted to integrate this, this would be minus w over 6 x minus a cubed. Now if you can believe everything that we've talked about so far in terms of you know using singularity functions to describe loading or moment functions and you can you know you understand the integration process with singularity functions then the problem solving is actually a rather simple process and when we do problem solving you're going to be typically given a beam with a bunch of loads on it and the way that you're going to go about this is is rather simple. The first thing you're going to do just like in any problem is calculate reactions. And that means using all your equilibrium equations that are available to you, assuming that the beam is statically determinate. The next thing you're going to do is write the load or moment functions. And this is where you use singularity functions. Then you just integrate to slope and displacement functions from there. And what, what's going to happen is when you start from the moment function, there's going to be constants that show up during the integration. And you're going to need boundary conditions to solve for these constants of integration. All right, so hopefully this, this introduction to the method of singularity functions was useful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll follow up with some other videos that have example problems and the application, which, which will be useful as well, because there are some things that you know I wasn't able to talk about here that are important in the application. All right, see ya.